Hi there, this is Kim Stedman, cubicle and nation escapee turned entrepreneur, and I am here to help you streamline, organize, and strategize your time so that you have more time to write your book. Today I have a little encouragement for you um, as a creative, as an author, and it is gleaned from the woolly bear caterpillar. Let me share my screen so I can show you a picture of one of those little fellas in case you're not familiar with them. It's those up there. Let me find a better picture. There it is, it's kind of larger. Can you see that? They are black on the end with a brown, rusty, reddish brown stripe in the middle. Now, a little piece of uh, trivia for you is that there's some folklore surrounding those caterpillars. And um, the reason I was looking into the caterpillar to begin with is because of a children's story I'm writing and I want the dog to have some interaction with a caterpillar. And um, anyway, I was just looking at caterpillar and this image came up and it reminded me I had some notes about this that I had gathered um, well over um, a year and a half ago for another project. <laughs> but the, the piece of trivia is that depending on the, the band width of the red, supposedly is how severe of a winter you're supposed to have. So if, if there's lots of brown showing, then that means you're gonna have a mild winter. But if there's a little bit of brown showing and it's mostly black on the ends, then that means you're supposed to have um, harsh winters. So that's what the folklore says. So if you ever see one of those type of caterpillars in the um, spring or summer, be sure and make note of the band and see, then watch for winter and see how it is. Now the reason that um, I wanted to come to you with some encouragement as a creative, because there's some lessons about the woolly bear caterpillar that you may or may not know. And that is that they, especially the ones in the Arctic region, okay, a caterpillar has to reach a certain size before it can weave itself into a cocoon and then that metamorphosis uh, start to happen to where they turn into a uh, tiger moth. And in the Arctic region, if for some reason winter comes early or um, the caterpillar was just too slow on eating uh, the greenery um, and the plants that it needed to, that caterpillar actually, his inside, he's kind of got like a built-in antifreeze system and he can freeze, okay? And then stay frozen during the winter and then when the spring thaw starts happening and it gets just the right warmth, he will emerge and start crawling around and start eating again to try to get to that perfect size that he has to be before he can weave into a cocoon, okay? Now, how many times can that caterpillar go through that cycle? They can go six to seven, up to 14 times of that start and stop cycle before they actually really get to weave into a cocoon and become the moth. And the notes that I found that I just wanted to share with y'all because it's so it fits with kind of what I've been struggling with myself um, over the past few months. And so I know I'm not the only creative, the only author that goes through this. Um, the lesson we can take away from the caterpillar is that it's okay to start and restart, okay? We very rarely get it right the first time. That's why in writing it's called a rough draft, all right? It's because it is a rough draft. It's not the final draft. And so you may have several different drafts and copies, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're a poor writer, that you don't know what you're doing. It just means it's not ready yet. And so you go the next level. And for other creatives, it's the same thing. You know, an artist may have a, a section that they have to, you know, uh, they have to redo, they have to repaint because, you know, it's not right. 
it's okay. I know when my mother was crocheting a piece one time, um, I remember sit, looking at her and she was over there just ripping out the stitches, um, not just one or twice. I mean, she was undoing and she I was like, what's wrong? And she said, well, the stitching wasn't right. It wasn't going to line up and I did something wrong. So I have to undo it to redo it. And, you know, I'm like, okay, but it's, it's, you know, it's what we have to do sometimes. Um, in writing, you know, you can come to the end of a first draft of a book that you've written and, and you may just decide that, you know what, I am just not resonating at all with this storyline, with this book. Um, you know, this is just not, doesn't feel right, doesn't feel good, you know, or whatever. And you might, you might shelve it for months, years. Um, but it's okay, all right? Let's take our lesson from the woolly bear caterpillar. The other one is when you aren't ready, you aren't ready. That's kind of like what I was alluding to at the end. You know, maybe you think you're ready to start writing a certain type genre of book, but, um, you know, you get everything all together, you get your notes, you get your outline, you know, you really, really think you're ready, and then you start doing it, and it's just not clicking. It just doesn't happen. It's okay. It does, you don't have to keep pushing through and finish it. Unless somebody's pay has prepaid you to do something, you don't have to do it. All right. The other lesson we can get from the woolly bear caterpillar is um, who you are now doesn't mean who you will be forever. And especially as an author. Um, you know, as I look at other authors and I look at the books that they've written, I was just in the library last week and I was looking at a children's book, um, which was, it was a really thick chapter book written by an author. Um, and I, I looked next to it and there was another children's book written by that same author. And it was a picture book. It was a 32 page picture book. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, she's kind of doing what I kind of will be doing, you know, and that's why, you know, I was interested in her because, you know, I, I have some chapter book ideas that I'm mulling on and working on, but I do know that I want a picture book as well with this same character. And I opened up the cover of her book and she's written a lot of books that weren't even in the children's book genre. Um, so, you know, I don't know her story. I don't know why she, um, you know, has now gone into children's books or if that's just the only two that she's got. I don't know any backstory about her, but, you know, the thing is, is that when she was writing, you know, one of those type books that weren't the children's book, you know, that didn't define that that is who she was going to be forever. And it's just like when she wrote the children's picture book, that didn't mean that that was who she was going to be forever. You know, she's, she's changing just like the, the caterpillar. She's, you know, each with each season, you know, changing and changing her writing style. Um, so it's not written in stone. Now I know some people that do certain creative outlets and that is all they do. And that is all they want to do. And that's, that's great. I, you know, that's fine if that's who you are, but that doesn't mean that it's right for everybody else. So as a writer, as an author, you know, you may find yourself being led to, you know, felt like it's time to write a new genre of book, a new type of book, whatever. Maybe step away from authoring books for a while. Maybe you want to write articles for magazines for a while. It's okay. It, what you do now doesn't mean that's how you will be forever, okay? Then the last thing from the Wooly Bear Caterpillar is just don't give up, okay? That little caterpillar, especially that one in the Arctic, I mean, can you imagine six and seven up to 14 times of crawling underneath the rock, hunkering down, and waiting for the big freeze, and then having to fall and starting over again, you know, or continuing where you left off? Um, but it's all good. It's all part of the story. It's all part of your story. And so don't, don't give up. If, 
you know, if you have to start and stop and change or whatever, it's okay. Starting, stopping, changing does not mean throw up your hands and totally give up. It just means you're starting, you're stopping, you're changing, and that's all it is. It's just a change in your motion. It doesn't mean that you're totally giving up. So I hope that this little um, encouragement to you um, about the woolly bear caterpillar helps you to, you know, think of your creativity, think of your writing, and um, just gather some some encouragement to, you know, keep keep moving forward, keep moving, don't give up. All right. This is Kim Stebbin from KimStebbin.com, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.